Today we're talking about one very different fish this week. We're talking about something that's actually native to North America. Let's talk about that. Welcome to another episode of Ocean State Aquatics TV with me, Salty Alley, here at our Wakefield location. And yes, I'm sitting in front of a display tank today because we're talking about something a little bit different. Today we're talking about Natropus chrysomus, aka the rainbow shiner. These fish are absolutely incredible. They may not look like much here on the camera, but they're probably one of my favorites. I know, every video, but it wouldn't be my favorite if I wasn't talking about it, right? Natropus chrysomus, or the rainbow shiner, has a native range that consists of the Mobile Bay Basin in Alabama, which includes the Coosa, Cahaba, and Alabama River drainage. It's not very often that we have North American native fish available in the aquarium hobby. That's probably why I just really have something special with these guys. I just think it's really neat to have fish that are actually found here in America. Just really, really cool. Rainbow shiners get an average of 1.5 to 2.5 inches long, full grown. So these guys behind me here are full grown at this size. They have an average lifespan of anywhere from 11 months all the way up to 24 months. So they're not a super long lived fish, but that's pretty common for Saprinids like them. These fish are usually found in small, slow moving streams that are usually filled with sand, gravel bottoms. They can also be found in small, clear springs as well. In the wild, these fish actually breed over gravelly nest pits of other fish, usually uh, creek chubs. The reason for this is because the eggs fall down into the bigger gravel pieces so they don't get eaten by other fish or themselves because they will eat their eggs. I'm actually gonna have Danny put in a little video here of ours, these ones here, actually breeding in one of the 29 gallon aquariums. And you can actually see how their colors just dramatically change during the breeding period when they are induced to spawn, usually actually by warmer water changes because they, they do breed in the spring and early summer, they will actually change into this amazing, amazing coloration. The males get this absolutely beautiful orange, pink, and blue color. The females will keep this same coloration pattern, but those males will just get absolutely stunning. So they don't keep that color, unfortunately, for very long. It usually lasts about a day or two, but it's a really neat, thing that you can kind of observe and watch after you do a nice warmer water change. If you feed them really heavy frozen food and you kind of fatten them up really good, that will also help induce that spawning behavior. You can see here in this aquarium, I actually kind of tried to replicate the best I could a stream. So I have a relatively stronger power head on this one end that's blowing a nice stream of water through here that kind of gives them that feeling of swimming through a stream or river. And I included some driftwood and I've got a mix of gravel and sand here on the bottom and I also included some of the catapa leaves that we actually have from Fritz and actually some of the nature box as well. There's some leaves and some bark and some cones in there just to kind of help simulate a stream or a river system. Why am I showing you the ones in the display tank if you can't buy them? Well that's a good question. So I actually do have a 29 gallon tank full of these guys available for sale right now. So if you're interested in them, you'll have to come on in and check them out. But don't be discouraged. They're not going to look like these guys quite yet because they're still young, but they are really fun and they're easy to breed too. So you definitely, if you're into breeding fish and you want to try something different, these guys are really fun and you'll have to come in and check them out. These fish are insectivores naturally in the wild. So they will feed on insect larvae, uh, free swimming insects and uh, basically anything they can find. They're pretty opportunistic. So they kind of just wait in the current and wait for food to flow right into their face for them to eat. <laughs> this being said, they are not picky eaters in the aquarium. They'll eat pretty much anything. Right now I feed a mixture of brine shrimp, mysis shrimp, daphnia. I feed a lot of heavy daphnia because it's more related to their insect diet. I also feed pellets and flakes and they eat everything without even any hesitation. The nice thing about these fish, like I had mentioned, uh, if you want to get them to spawn, you can turn the temperature up or do a warm water change, but you don't have to keep a heater with these guys because they are native to North America. They don't need any hot water. So I don't actually keep a heater in here and they actually prefer that little bit cooler water. These guys are super, super peaceful so they can be kept with other fish if you wanted to keep them with other fish that don't need a heater like you could keep them with I've kept them with betas before and they're not aggressive at all they don't nip them they're very peaceful um, you could also keep them with white cloud minnows because they're another cool water species so you could try that hill stream loaches would do really well with 
them because they both also like the cool water and the fast moving current. So that would be a good tank mate with them. I don't mix them with anything because I'm kind of trying to go with the biotope theme in this aquarium. So I haven't mixed them with anything else because we don't have anything else native to North America at the moment. Just a really, really neat fish to do in a species only or in a mixed friendly community tank that's not kept too, too warm because they won't be happy around 78, 80 degrees. It's a bit too warm for them. But if you do, like I said, have a tank that's got cooler water fish, these guys would do great in there. As far as sexing these fish, the easiest way to tell is based on their body style and their color. As small babies, you're best off just getting a whole big group of them and letting them kind of mature and age on their own and see what you end up getting. If you get them a little bit larger, if you take a look at their body style, the females are thicker top to bottom. You'll notice a quite a big difference um, and when you watch videos of these guys and the males will have much more beautiful coloration. The males, even when they're not fired up and breathing, they'll still have really pretty bright blue iridescence on their fins and you'll still see some pinkish coloration that's much more prominent on them versus the females. These fish are best kept in groups. Ideally 10 to 12 is a good number. So if you are going to come in and get some, I would suggest getting a nice little size group. You could do six, but I wouldn't do anything less than that. So six would, I would say would be the minimum. As far as minimum tank size, these guys really should be kept in the minimum size of a 20 gallon long or larger. I wouldn't do a 20 high. They do kind of like that length. These fish are extremely hardy and they're relatively resistant to disease. They're all a captive bred. So that's about sums it up about the rainbow shiner. These guys are really, really neat. If you're looking for something different and unique and just really absolutely beautiful, come on in and check them out. Like I said, I have a whole tank full of them. So you have to come on in and get some for yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Ocean State Aquatics TV with me, Salty Alley. And you know what to do. Keep it fresh, baby.